So, I've been in my new studio that we built in a garage at my house. If you missed the moving vlogs, link will be in the description. I've been here about a year now. We started construction on it in November of 2020. It's hard to believe it has been so long. However, throughout this year, there has certainly been a part of the studio that has remained completely neglected and mostly useless, despite the fact that back at the apartment, the exact same setup was one of my most used and most popular setups, given that we do a lot of PC building content and things like that. And that's what's right behind me, the workbench. It's remained cluttered, covered in stuff, the storage below it was completely in disarray, I had discovered some things for the pegboard but never really got it how it was supposed to be, and it's just stayed a complete disaster, meaning if I wanted to work on projects or do PC building videos or stream from it, which I got really set up for, I couldn't do that. And then that slowly kind of spilled over here towards the storage wall, which has been a complete wreck as well. So today's video is a part one of two of updating the studio vlogs. You all already, actually I guess this would be two of three, because you all already saw my desk, my desk revamp, which we will follow up on. I've got some thoughts. We're, we're, we're going to be fixing this. I'm, I have some workflow tips for the workbench. I've got some pegboard thoughts. I've got some streaming thoughts. we got the audio set up for it. And then in part three, I guess now, I've got the stuff we're going to do my own like fume ventilation so that for certain things we're doing here the fumes don't just sit here and cause me health problems we're gonna pump the fumes out through the attic out of the garage and I'm rigging that up myself so lots of cool stuff but that'll be in the next part we're doing a lot of reorganizing and rebuilding here as I have spent the past couple weeks tearing out part of my studio to do this let's jump in to start, I wanted to show some footage from the original workbench build that I didn't show in my studio tour, in that I ceiling mounted a camera slider. Sounds pretty ridiculous, but it ended up working out quite well. I used a wall baby plate that you would, it's usable for both a wall or a ceiling, and then it came with a 90 degree baby pin, so I could then angle it downwards at the workbench. This was of course for the overhead camera shot. To mount the baby plate on the ceiling, I used drywall anchors, which are obviously not ideal, especially if you're going to be running with a lot of movement on the slider. I don't use mine for the slider functionality very much, it's more of a convenience and occasional use thing, uh, but I would definitely try to get some studs or butterfly anchors if you plan on using this heavily. I used an old motorized slider that I had that I don't really use a whole lot, it doesn't hold my bigger cameras, so I paired it with the Sony A5100 with the kit lens. I routed the controls and the HDMI cables and all of that with some slack alongside the whole setup here and down the side of my pegboard. And then I mounted the control mechanism with Gorilla Tape to the side of the workbench. It connects to the slider and powers it over basically a CAT6 cable and then takes micro USB power. So fairly straightforward there and then I have super easy adjustments whenever I need it. A big challenge I faced with this setup was getting audio working, and I partnered again with Clock Audio for the audio setup. I consulted them following my previous video on them in the spring. They recommended a pair of their C3100 microphones mounted to the pegboard. That way it's kind of integrated into the setup, it's out of the way, it's not distracting or obvious, but I get good audio coverage. They have little rubber shock absorbers, and the cables just run down to a Behringer 204 HD interface, and they provide a nice stereo capture if I want the actual, like, directional audio separation if I'd like, or otherwise I just downmix them to mono and provide a nice coverage of audio regardless of where I am around the workbench. It's very impressive and cleanly integrated, and it sounds pretty great. I've been using it in streams for a little while whenever I do my workbench streams. I think I have to carefully figure out where it's going to go because I have a couple things to keep uh, in mind. The first is we have all of our hard ducting that I showed during the moving vlog installed in the attic right above me. To clean up the workbench and the whole setup itself, I had three main problems to tackle. The organization of the tools and materials, the available surface space, and storage capacity. I made some solid moves for tool organization whenever I first moved in, and even 3D printed some good holders for things once I got my 3D printer, but I just kind of threw them up on the pegboard to take up space rather than designing a good flow, and I spend more time finding stuff and moving things off the surface than actually using it at the moment, and that is a problem. I have new tools coming in and a lot that I don't even use available here, including some big cable wraps that were just there for storage, not because they ever got used. These big shelves were nice when I was mainly storing PC cases and CRTs, but I need more room for actual smaller component storage. I've even got a VHS capture station to integrate here as well. 
I started with a keyboard tray from Habit. I don't usually use keyboard trays, but I needed the keyboard and mouse off of this work surface. It's honestly half of my problem with working space on the surface itself, but I regularly use the mouse and keyboard when I'm streaming, sending commands to my 3D printer or laser engraver, and so on. But even a small 10 keyless keyboard and a smaller mouse, it's still just, it's always in the way, I'm always getting into it and dirtying up the mouse and keyboard more than they necessarily need to. The only installation quirk with this keyboard tray that I ran into was I was measuring the inside space that I had available for the drawer itself to fit in and the flanges that you actually screw up under the desk point outward by default and that's how it's supposed to be used. It, it was kind of awkward but I was able to install them facing inward and it is mostly fine. It's a little tight because the the legs of the workbench aren't exactly squared off, so it's a little tighter in the back once I push it in all the way, but honestly, it works fine. This was a little expensive for basically a piece of metal and a couple sliders, but it feels super sturdy and will last me quite a while. I like this so much that I ordered a pull-out drawer from Gomi for the other side. This one has the flanges fitting fine since it was smaller. Installation was also super straightforward. It doesn't house much, but it holds some loose screws, a pencil sharpener, rulers, etc. And mostly stuff I would have had thrown around the work surface or keep losing whenever I put it in bins and things like that anyway. So super handy here. While I was working on this, I queued up some 3D prints for some more pegboard accessories. First, another big screwdriver holder. This thinner one I was using with the slots just lets the drivers fall out and wasn't super Super useful. This bigger one is awesome and holds a lot, it just takes forever to print. Second was some tape holders. I had two of these paper towel holders I previously bought, one for the blue shop towels and another one I was just using for tape rolls, but they suck. It's always falling off the pegboard, it just doesn't work well. So to the garbage with those, I bought a big beefy paper towel holder that absolutely rocks and then 3D printed some tape roll holders for the other tape rolls. These are sick and really handy and they're also space efficient since they kind of come out at an angle, they don't really take up a ton of space for holding a lot of rolls of tape. I've got gaffer tape, green screen tape, masking tape, duct tape, all electrical tape, all kinds of stuff. It was time to tear down everything on the pegboard and reorganize. The goal here was keeping similar tools together and most frequently used tools easiest to access, since of course the pegboard does basically go up to the ceiling. These 3D printed plier pegboard holders are a lifesaver. As I figured out what the workflow would look like and where the tools go, uh, we, we built up a gradient of screwdrivers to pliers to drills and to tape. Then as we move up, it's stuff I still need accessible and visible, so I remember they exist, but not quite in reach. When I first moved in, I went crazy buying a bunch of little cups and baskets and holders for the pegboard just trying to make it feel more useful, but just putting random stuff in them as I went. Most of these came down, but some of the cups still have uses, such as for zip ties, thermal compound tubes, etc. The top section of the pegboard was the weird part, since I had a lot of big stuff that I needed to be accessible, but... Obviously, I don't need them every day, so some of the baskets and shelves ate up this space. Perhaps it's not the most efficient flow, but it's a lot better than just having big cords up there eating that space, and that stuff is right where I need it, so I remember it exists. I wound up removing my soldering iron from the bench surface. Long term, I'd rather it stay, but for now, keeping it up on a shelf and just pulling it down whenever I'm soldering seems to be a smarter flow and allows me more work surface when I'm not doing that work. My secret weapon for finalizing the pegboard build was mounting a Fuel World fuel monitor upside down using some zip ties and a basic cold shoe mount. This gives me an unobtrusive monitor smack in the middle of the pegboard that I can use to see chat or see what's on camera at any point in time. No more wrong camera angles or head in the shot. Well, I hope. Now that the pegboard and surface of the workbench was mostly handled, it's time to enhance the storage below. It was time for a couple trips to the hardware stores. I picked up a new 7 and a quarter inch circular saw and some plywood and cut myself a new shelf. I was hoping for the charge left on the batteries from the store would let me cut these two pieces, but I was wrong. Oh, you remember the whole measure twice, cut once thing? Whoops. Second time's the charm. I mounted up some 2x4 blocks in place to hold the shelves, finding out that despite the buckets of screws that I have, I only had two that were the right length for this. I made it work though, and I have a new shelf in place with storage that actually makes a lot more sense, especially once loaded up. That's a lot better. Very few things are stacked now. Everything is accessible based on priority. This is pretty nice. 
My big thing that I run into with all of my storage solutions and I'm trying to work around is that is having to constantly dig out boxes or totes from underneath each other. Eventually it just all ends up on the floor and your nasty comments show right up. Some cleanup work was needed from here and I have a much better workbench solution all around. It's more usable, more creative, and less obnoxious in the background of videos and streams. I even had enough room to 3D print me one more drawer below the bench surface that houses my lighting remotes. Very nice. Projects like this pay off in folds when it comes to my workflow and efficiency in creating content and doing what I do, but it means missing out on releasing content in the short term. This ate up at least a week of my time, and my backlog of finished content definitely started to run dry. This would be a problem if not for the independent video site I've built with my creator friends. The site is called Nebula, and we've partnered with CuriosityStream. Nebula features YouTube's top education creators such as Legal Eagle, Thomas Frank, and MKBHD. My videos are higher quality, they are ad-free, and often extended from the YouTube versions. Curiosity Stream saw what we were doing for education and wanted to form an alliance. If you click the link below, you not only get access to Curiosity Stream and their library of thousands of documentaries and educational content, but you get access to Nebula and all of our edutainment over there too. Two sites for the price of one. Better yet, Curiosity Stream is currently running a holiday promotion where you can get 42% off an annual subscription, making it under $12 per year for both sites. Absolutely wild. While you're there, check out Nature Through Her Eyes, a mini documentary series showcasing the beautiful world of nature through the eyes of four female cinematographers. Head over to curiositystream.com slash epos for the best deal in streaming and get access to both sites for under $12 per year. 42% off. It's bonkers. Just do it. From there, I grabbed three more quality of life improvements. First, a nice long floor mat to keep my feet comfortable when standing here for a super long time. Because oh boy, they start to ache. I am getting old. Next up, a 10 outlet power strip in the long form factor to run the width of the workbench, giving me a lot more flexibility for hooking up to test PCs, gear like my soldering iron, etc. without cramping around the one that's clamped on with the three plug splitter that I had. And lastly, while I had audio capture, I never had audio playback to watch tutorials, hear alerts, anything like that, so I got a $50 pair of Logitech Z207 speakers. I had nowhere to mount these. Like, I bought them without any clue how I was going to use them. I was going to 3D print me some shelves to mount on the wall, but the cable that runs between them doesn't even reach around the pegboard, so I got creative. Despite the suboptimal positioning and etc, these... <laughs> I expected these to sound bad, and they sound really good for what they are. I was kind of blown away. This leaves us with two major tasks for next time. First, I need to make one of those cliche YouTuber charging walls. I originally put this on a shelf to be a charging station, and it's just disaster everywhere. There's not enough rooms, batteries fall off behind the PC all the time. It just doesn't work for me at all, especially now that I have this big new Makita charger to add to it as well. I have a place for this to mount, just not the materials yet. Lastly, I need to install some ventilation. I now have a laser engraver, I solder, I have my 3D printer, all which spit out a ton of fumes and smoke that my little carbon filter on a fan does not get rid of. I have a plan for this and the materials, just need the time to install it, so stay tuned. The only thing that I did not finalize when I was actually building this out, other than the two things I just listed that I haven't actually done yet, are the VHS capture station, the wiring for that. I feel like a couple of my VCRs died because the setup was working perfectly at one point and now it's not, so I gotta fight that a little bit. But otherwise, I have a much more functional workbench to work at, to build things, to create, as well as to live stream and broadcast it to you. I'm still working on the multicam setup. Uh, I was hoping the Obsbot Tiny would work on Linux, and while you can manually control the PTZ on Linux, the face tracking does not work, and it keeps resetting. So I'm still figuring out camera solutions here, but I think I have some good stuff coming down the pipes for that as well. So that about wraps up my Workbench Renovation Adventures Part 1. We have a Part 2 coming soon. I hope you have a great Thanksgiving holiday if you celebrate that. Otherwise, hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech, education, and stream guides. Let me know what you think about little BTS things like this. And if you have any questions about the setup, join us on Discord. Discord.gg slash I'm Vox, the stream professor. And remember, be kind, rewind.